Good afternoon, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your second video blog of the day for Friday, January 8th, 2016, around 3.45 in the afternoon in Bellica, Massachusetts. It's a cloudy day out right now. Looks like it's going to snow, but it's not going to. It's not supposed to. Got some maybe some little raindrops or little um, snowflakes but nothing significant and stuff and it's going to be a kind of a dull weekend weather wise We're not going to see the sun Sunday's a washout but highs in the 50s and stuff with a lot of rain some news to report um, Powerball is now up to 800 million dollars to high, high jackpot so lots of people are buying tickets and stuff. You probably climbed the nine hundred million dollars, but the odds of you winning Powerball is not that great. One in two hundred and twenty-five million. And the Montreal Canadiens goaltender Carey Price is going to be out three more weeks with a lower body injury. That's not healing right, so he's going to be lost until after the All Star break. And that's about it on the news. My second video blog subject of the day is about one of the most legendary tag teams in professional wrestling history. The Fabulous Freebirds. The Fabulous Freebirds were Michael P.S. Hayes, Buddy Roberts, Buddy Jack Roberts, and Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Later on, it was Jimmy Jam Garvin in the WCW version. And the Fabulous Freebirds were probably one of the most important heel teams of all time and stuff. They went from territory to territory, probably one of the lead villains on each territory. They're known for the famous Von Erich feud and World Class Championship Wrestling that made that territory and stuff. The, be the start of the Fabulous Freebirds started out in like 1978 when rookies Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy were were wrestling as a tag team in a few southern territories, including Southeast Championship Wrestling and Memphis, and they were a tag team, the Freebirds. They won a few regional tag team titles and stuff, and Hayes was becoming like a kind of a a good heel and stuff, and Gordy was like becoming a big, good big man for his size. And they were an okay tag team, but like in 1979, they went to Mid-South Wrestling, held, headed by Cowboy Bill Watts, and they added a third member, veteran wrestler Buddy Roberts, who was famous for teaming with Jerry Brown in some regional territories as the first incarnation of the Hollywood Blondes, with Buddy Roberts as their like veteran leader to keep like Gordy and Hayes kind of under control backstage because they were kind of new to the business. The Freebirds flourished as like a great tag team and Michael Hayes became one of the top heels in wrestling in 1980 when he accidentally blinded the junkyard dog with the Freebirds shaving cream. The junkyard dog was like blind and stuff even though this was an angle. Cowboy Bill Watts played it up that the junkyard dog was completely blind, that he was never going to regain his eyesight again. They were piping it up, up on television that the junkyard dog could not see the birth of his daughter and stuff. And to protect this angle, the junkyard dog had to stay at home for a few weeks and stuff. And a lot of fans were concerned about the junkyard dog. They mailed, they mailed the, the junkyard dog money to the offices of Mid-South wrestling and this was legit but most of the money they were given was were monopoly money and stuff and they eventually had the blow off angle with the junkyard dog coming to the ring like blinded in the super dome to face michael P hayes and stuff but eventually like he reg miraculously regained his side and beat up on michael hayes for the big blow off he wasn't he wasn't really blind and stuff it was just a wrestling angle and that was probably one of the most famous angles in Mid-South Wrestling history. And then the Freebirds won a few um, Mid-South tag, tag Team titles, and I used the Freebird rule that any two members 
um, Gordy, Hayes, or Roberts could be t defending the title at any time, and they sometimes would do switch around with some of the face tag teams and stuff, and the Free Birds would retain the titles, and that got the faces mad, but they had the contract that the Free, free Birds were on the contract, so it could have been any one of them. Eventually, they went to Georgia Championship Wrestling, and won many tag team titles in Georgia Championship Wrestling. They did a, kind of a similar angle in Georgia Championship Wrestling with Ted DiBiase, with, the, with Hayes and Gordy and Roberts giving the spike pile driver to Ted DiBiase a few times. Ted DiBiase was in a local Atlanta hospital for weeks, and the bookers of Georgia Championship Wrestling had to play the hospital, that it was just a wrestling angle and stuff, and a lot of fans were, were Get calling up the hospital in Atlanta, and it blew up the the like the phone lines there. And Hayes was developing a kind of becoming like a big time heel and stuff. Uh, there were also rumors going around at this time that Vince McMahon Senior was like scouting for possible um, heels to face off against Bob Backlund in. Madison Square Garden for the WWE Championship around 1981-1982. It was just a rumor going around that um, Mc, Vince McMahon Sr. was really interested in bringing Michael Pace to WWE and pairing in him with a manager the Grand Wizard of Wrestling. And I heard rumors that Hayes and Backlund was going to have a three-match series in Ma Madison Square Garden and stuff, but that never came to fruition and stuff. I heard something that Backlund did not want to like feud with somebody who was kind of a little green in the wrestling business at the time with Michael Hayes and stuff, but Hayes was becoming a great heel and stuff. And it would have been very interesting to see a Hayes Backlund series for the WWE title. It, it would probably be something like um, Hayes wins by DQ by count out the first time and Backlund wins by, you know, count out a disqualification and they have a cage match or a lumberjack match or a Texas death match for the third and final match and as a square got, got into blow off that that would have been interesting but anyway the free birds you know continue running crazy in Georgia Championship Wrestling Ted DiBiase eventually got his revenge on the free birds and in early 1981 the free birds were temporarily like broken up Buddy Roberts quit wrestling for a while and eventually Hayes and Gordy feud up among one another over the Freebird name. Hayes turned into a face while Gordy remained a heel. Gordy usually teamed with Superfly Jimmy Snicker. He was a heel back then and Hayes had a variety of partners including Andre the Giant, K Kevin Von Herrick and a football player named Otis Schwemmick. And they feuded over the Georgia Tag Team Championships and this feud was about a year or so but you know it wasn't great and eventually Hayes and Gordy and Roberts were re reunited at World Class Championship Wrestling in Dallas, Texas. They came in the fall of 1982. Originally they were allies of the Von Erichs but they weren't allies for them for very long in Christmas night 1982. The Freebirds um, won the World Six Man Tag Team titles in World Class Championship Wrestling but Buddy Rogers Roberts, I mean, missed his flight, and David Von Erich substituted for them, saying that David Von Erich was a tag team partner with with Michael Hayes in Georgia, but it was actually Kevin Von Erich and stuff, and that was the storyline. They win, and David Von Erich gives back the World Six-Man Tag Team title to the Freebirds because it was the right thing to do later on in that night. Michael Hayes was a special guest referee for the Kerry Von Erich Ric Flair World Championship match for the NWA World title in Steel Cage along with David Manning. Michael Hayes was was um, was like siding with Kerry Von Erich. He actually threw Kerry Von Erich on Ric Flair but Kerry Von Erich did not want to win the NWA World Championship by cheating and stuff. He got mad at Hayes and stuff and Hayes and um, Von Erich were arguing and then Terry Gordy hits Kerry Von Erich with the, the with the door in the cage because um, Terry Gordy was the keeper of the cage so nobody could interfere and that started the Von Eric Freebird Field. Kerry lose, loses the match to Flair and for the next year and a half the Von Erichs 
and the Freebirds were fielding over the World Class Championship Wrestling World Six Man Tag Team Titles, and they fielded all over the up World Class Territory, made millions of dollars for the company and stuff. And it was the only promotion in North America that a, a secondary belt was the primary focus. Then the World Championship, or the top belt, which was the North American title. And the Von Eric said, this is this feud is not about Texas versus Georgia. It's about decency and felt. And everybody would love to, love to see the Von Erics beat up on the Freebirds. They swapped the World Class, class Six-Man Tag Team titles several times and stuff. The fans hated the Freebirds. They were probably the most hated heels in Texas in history and stuff. It got to the point and f when Fritz Von Erich came out of retirement to face the Freebirds. This feud was hot and stuff. Very, very hot. In early 1994, when David Von Erich suddenly passed away, the, f the feud wasn't the same because Hayes and Gordy and Roberts really liked working with David Von Erich the most. They had to work with Mike Von Erich, who wasn't, you know, really didn't care. He, he, they thought he didn't really care for the business and stuff. He was kind of forced into business because of his father, Fritz. And in the summer of 1984, the Freebirds left World Class Championship Wrestling, and then they went to other territories. They went to the WWE, and they were managed by David Wolf, who was at one time Cindy Lauper's manager. The Freebirds had a few TV tapings wrestling as a six-man tag. They even made a Madison Square Garden match. The plan was to break up the Freebirds and make Michael Hayes a heel and eventually feud with Hulk Hogan. But he, um, Michael Hayes didn't like the idea. He wanted to keep the Freebirds together with Gordy and Roberts. So they packed their bags from New York and went to Florida and went to went to Memphis, but they went back to World Class Championship Wrestling, the feud with Devastation Incorporated, which was a few hill faction headed by Scandor Akbar. They out they they like were allies of the Von Erics again, but they turned on them and they feuded over the World's Class Six Man Tag Team titles. But the juice wasn't there. They left World Class Championship Wrestling to go to the AWA and stuff. And the Freebirds feuded with the World Warriors over the AWA World Tag Team titles. Also, Michael P.S. Hayes got several title shots against Rick Martel for the AWA World title. But um, Hayes could, could not wrest the AWA World title from Rick Martel. Freebirds went back to World Class Championship Wrestling to continue the feud with the Von Alex in late 1985, early 1986. But around February of 1986, the Freebirds left World Class Championship Wrestling to go back to Mid-South Wrestling headed by Bill Watts. Bill Watts was rebranding World Class, I mean, Mid-South Wrestling as the Universal Wrestling Federation to compete with WWE and Jim Crockett Promotions, the lead NWA territory. The, the storyline says the Freebirds signed with Mid-South Wrestling and Universal Wrestling Federation for $1 million, but it was kayfabe. The Freebirds had a decent one in the rebranded Mid-South Wrestling, Universal Wrestling Federation, fielding with the top faces, including Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Ted DiBiase and Dr. Death Steve Williams, but it was kind of short-lived because it's around this time that Terry Bam Bam Gordy signed a contract to wrestle in Japan, and, and half the time he, had a, he wasn't in the major storylines for... Um, the Freebirds and stuff. They had to do injury angles. Terry Gordy actually won the Universal Wrestling Federation World Title briefly and stuff. And from time to time, he would leave and stuff. And that left the Freebirds kind of in limbo. They tr they tried Michael Hayes as a heel commentator with Jim Watts, which was pretty good and stuff. But Hayes still had a lot to offer as a wrestler and stuff. And they actually eventually turned the Freebirds face in 1987 and stuff. They were okay faces. But when UWF was bought by Jim Crockett Promotions, Gordy and Roberts left the promotion to go back to World Class Championship Wrestling. Hayes stuck it out with Jim Crockett Promotions for a while, but eventually he got fired. And they had, they, we had, they reunited the, the Freebirds again, but this time with 
Gordy and Robert and Iceman King Parsons and the Angel of Death to feud up with Kevin and Kerry Von Erich and Chris Adams. They started this feud on Christmas night, 1987, when French Von Erich faked a heart attack in his last, last wrestling angle and stuff. And this, he was trying to get the f juices of the Freebirds versus Von Erich feud, but it wasn't working because the dynamics weren't there. Michael Pays eventually came back and he sided with Kevin and Kerry Von Erich and Chris Adams. It would have been okay. He should have, feud he should have sided with um, Roberts and Gordy and Iceman King Parsons and the Angel of Death, but that was very short-lived because Roberts was getting too old to wrestle a lot. It's the, the accumulations of injuries eventually turned him into, into a manager. Gordy didn't didn't wrestle half the time with this few because he had bounced around from Japan back to the United States. He was making more money in Japan than in the United States and stuff. Hayes kind of looked out of place as a face siding with the with the Von Erics and stuff. Eventually, for a while, the Freebirds were basically broken up. But in 1989, they came back when Hayes signed with WCW and stuff. He first was a face, but then he turned on Lex Luger, and he became the U.S. champion at Wrestle War in 1989, being Luger with help from Terry Bam Bam Gordy. But that was short-lived. A couple of weeks later, um, Luger won back the world class. I mean, won back the U.S. championship from um, L um, Hayes, and then Gordy and Hayes became a tag team again, and then they made it to the. Um, WCW World Tag Team Championship Finals at a class of champions. He had introduced a new Freebird member, Jimmy G Jam Garvin, who was gorgeous Jimmy Garvin. He was actually the unofficial Freebird member because a few times back in the mid-80s, he teamed with the Freebirds on some spot house shows in World Class Championship Wrestling. Jimmy G Jam Garvin was okay at a f as a Freebird and stuff, but they needed a third Freebird because Terry Bam Bam Gordy will go back and forth between WCW and Japan. The Freebirds won the WCW World Tag Team Championship with just Hayes and Garvin and stuff. Eventually, Gordy left WCW because of too much Japanese commitments, and Hayes and Garvin were the Freebirds. They were okay together and stuff. They held the WCW World Tag Team titles for about six months, but they dropped it to the Steiners on an edition of WCW Saturday Night. Then, the suits of WCW, most of 1990, the Freebirds were basically a comedy tag team, which was pretty, pretty awful. Feud it with the Rock and Roll Express over music deals and stuff like that. Feud it with lower level tag teams and stuff. Eventually, they made them commentators on WCW Pro and stuff, which was, you know, awful and stuff. Hayes and Gordy were, um, Hayes and Garvin were not really comedy heels and stuff. They were, you know, they were just playing the part, but it was awful, in my humble opinion. Uh, eventually, um, Hayes and Hayes and, and Garvin were feuding with Southern Boys, which was Tracy Smothers and Steve Armstrong and stuff. They briefly brought back Buddy... Roberts in the fall, but that was just a for a few TV tapings, and I and the, the plan was to have the Freebirds feud with the Southern Boys and Bob Armstrong, but the head of WCW at the time, Jim Hurd, did not want Buddy Roberts and Bob Armstrong wrestling in the league because they thought they were too old and stuff. So so stu stupid in my humble opinion and stuff, because you know I think. They just, he just didn't like the way it was. Freebirds continued to be like like a secondary tag team until early 1991 when they got a little bit of a of, of juice again when they added Diamond Dallas Page and Big Daddy Dink, who was Sir Oliver Humper Dink as their manager. They beat Doom, Ron Simmons, and Butch Reed for the WCW World tie, Tag Team titles as Wrestle War 91. And they had a couple weak Grain as World Tag Team Champions, but they lost it to the Steiners on a TV taping. Actually, the Steiners won it several weeks before, um, before the they were going 
going to win at West War 92. It was um, 91 because it was taped. The title changed several weeks before West War 91. So the Freebirds had a negative title reign and stuff. Eventually, the Freebirds beat the Young Pistols, which was Tracy Smothers and Steve Armstrong. They were rebranded the Young Pistols because WCW was a national company and Southern Boys sounded too regional and stuff. And they did it at like the first Super Bowl for the U.S. Tag Team titles. They added a third member, a mass wrestler called Bad Street, which was Brad Armstrong and stuff. But, you know, Brad Armstrong was very miscast as a mass wrestler, Bad Street, and eventually the Freebirds lost the U.S. Tag Team titles to the Patriots, and eventually DDP and Big Daddy Dink and Bad Street were dropped and stuff, and they um, turned the uh, Freebirds face to feud with the Enforcers on Anderson, Tully Branchard for the WCW. No, Arn Anderson and Larry Sabisco for the WCW World Tag Team Titles. They had a few matches, which was okay. The Freebirds actually wrestled under mass briefly as the Screaming Eagles, and they beat um, the Enforcers to get a World Tag Team Title shot, but the Enforcers beat the Freebirds and stuff like that. And, and like, for most of nine, the late 91 and stuff, they well, like feuding with secondary tag teams. They got re rebooted in early 1992 as like Rock and Roll or Wannabes. Like, I'm a free bird, what is your excuse? It was just, you know, they were running out of ideas for the free birds and stuff. Uh, the free birds feuded with um, Terry Taylor and Greg DeHaan of Valentine over the U.S. tag team titles, which was pointless at that point time because they didn't have too many tag teams and stuff and eventually the Freebirds beat um, the Hammer and Terry Taylor at Wrestle War 92 to win the US tag team titles but they lost it a few weeks later to Dick Slater and the Barbarian and they retired the US tag team titles their, uh, Cowboy Bill Watts had a plan was going to turn Michael Hayes, fa uh, Michael Hayes heel on Jimmy Garvin and they were going to feud with one another in uh, in this in the uh, fall of 1992 for the Freebird name and stuff. But Jimmy Garvin was fired by WCW, and they kept Michael Hayes as a heel commentator. He became a heel manager to Arn Anderson and Bobby Eaton to. And they, he was supposed to lead them to the WCW World Tag Team titles, but he was eventually going to turn on them um, and we and like manage Steve Dr. Def Williams and Terry Gordy and stuff and try to make them the, the new Freebirds and stuff, but that didn't work out. The Freebirds were basically dead in WCW. They came back briefly in 1994 when, like, Michael Hayes was... Injured, too, too injured to wrestle Johnny B. Bad and stuff at Super Bowl 4 he was in a wheelchair and stuff and WCW commissioned uh, Nick Barquinko said the Freebirds still had a valid WCW contract they had Jimmy Jam Garvin wrestle um, Johnny B. Bad at that pay-per-view it was an awful awful match and then the Freebirds with Hayes Gordy and Garvin wrestled for the dying days of the Global Wrestling Federation at the Sportatorium in the summer of 1994. Before that, that promotion closed down, but the Freebirds were way past their prime and stuff, and when GWF folded, the Freebirds were done for good and stuff. The Freebirds were one of the best tag teams of all time, probably in the top ten and stuff. They had reached its peak with the Von Erich versus the Von Erich feud with all class championship wrestling and stuff and Hayes was probably very great and stuff with all the stuff he did with the heel work in Mid-South and Georgia he would have probably been a great heel if they broke it up but he, he did not want that team to be broken up Gordy was pretty good as well and he, he eventually became a good 
big man wrestler, and Roberts was basically used as a veteran, and he, he felt as well pretty good. Then, like the Freebirds in WCW, Garvin was oh, okay, but turning them into comedy heel tag team wasn't the cup of tea and stuff. They were trying to embarrass the Freebird name and stuff, and you know giving them a couple of token reigns as WCW World Tag Team Champions and the U.S. title, which was a which was a pointless tag team title, in my humble opinion. And the and it would have been interesting to see a Freebird f- feud over the name with Garvin versus Hayes and stuff, but I think somehow Hayes probably would have won that feud because he, was, he still had those heel things. Garvin was basically, in my humble opinion, done as a serious wrestler in the late 1980s and stuff. And the Freebirds have been mentioned as a possible candidate for the Hall of Fame for the WWE in 2016. And I think it's pro- pro- probably going to happen. And they're probably going to induct Hayes, Gordy, Roberts, and Garvin in, into the Hall of Fame and stuff. They sh- it should be just Hayes, um, Gordy, and Roberts. Two of them are no longer with us, Gordy and Roberts. But, you know, the WWE will have to induct all of them. And that's about it on that. Be back for the third and final video blog of the night, which will be about um, Fox 25 um, news anchor in the morning, Sarah Walt. Sarah Underwood. Keep calm, everybody. I'm a truly funny guy. Molly Rosenblatt of WCC All Rocks and has less nice legs. Elizabeth Hot's the best. Amy Swansea's so, so cute and awesome. And in the words of uh, Bob Redding, former executive director of the Boys and Girls Club, Ray Bell, I've got more to marry you by now.